Hi again. We're still looking at factoring. We just looked at the idea of common factoring. I don't think I actually called it that, but it's the idea of taking something out that terms have in common. Remember, when I say taking it out, it means we're going to put brackets around the term and divide each term by what we put in front of the bracket, what we took out. So I've got a slightly more complicated case right here. What I've got is 3xh minus 2h plus 9xy squared minus 6y squared all equaling 0. Alright, well we look at this and again we're doing common factoring. We're looking for things they have in common. And I can see these two both have h's. These two both have x's. These two both have y squareds. So I've got to start thinking what do I want to factor. I look at these two, if I factored out x from both of them, well, then I'm basically done. I can't do anything more. Whereas I could factor out h's with these two, y's with these two, and I at least got to factor out two things. It's done more work, so let's start with that. So in this case, again, what do they have in common? An h. So I factor out an h, I bring the h in front of the bracket, and then divide everything left by h. 3x divided by h, 3x. Dividing 2h by h, just leaves a 2 behind. Now in this case, we can definitely factor out a y squared because they both have that. But if we look, we can also factor out a 3. Remember, factoring out, we want to leave behind whole numbers. In this case, if I divide both these terms by 3, I'm going to still get whole numbers. And we saw before in a previous video, you could do it step by step. You could factor out the y squared and then the 3 or vice versa. But really, you could do it all in one. As you get more experience, you're going to factor out more than one thing at a time. So let's do that this time. Factoring out 3y squared. So remember, divide each term by 3y squared. That becomes 3x. And this would become 2. Again, this is still all equal to 0. Now if you look, you might notice this bracket, this bracket are exactly the same. <laughs> it's not a coincidence. I purposely did it. And I want to demonstrate something. Because we can keep factoring. And this is tricky the first few times you see it. It gets a little confusing. So what we're going to do is a substitution. We're always allowed to replace something in an equation with something else if we define it. And then just plug it back in later. A lot of cases that would be useless. I mean, I could say h is equal to k. OK, that wouldn't help me. I could do it, but, and then later on replace k with h again, but in this case we're going to be strategic. I want to take this whole bracket and say, arbitrarily I'm going to decide z. Could use any variable I want, but I'm saying z is equal to 3x minus 2. And again, this is just to help us picture this next part of the steps that I'm going to do. Because the first few times again you see it, it's a little weird. So everywhere we have 3x minus 2, we're replacing with z. So we have, this whole thing is now z h times z, plus 3y squared, well, this also has z, still all equal to 0. And now we can start seeing this is common factoring again. I have a z in each term, I can factor out a z, or divide both terms by z, and still have things left. So I can put the z in front, and now I have h plus 3y squared. Remember, all I did was divide each term by what I dragged out in front, the z. But z is actually 3x minus 2. So let's put that back in. Again, this might seem kind of silly. This was just to help us visualize it. Because now we have this. We've taken that fairly complicated, fairly long, at least, equation and simplified it down to this. And the thing is, later on, you might stop replacing things. You might not use this z substitution. The first few times, it really helps picture it. Because now I see this, and I see, oh, that's common factoring. But really, so is this. You can factor out a more complicated term if everything has it. Sure, this has two things. So what? This has the exact same two things, so I can factor it out. Eventually, you might just skip from this step right here down to this one. But for the first few times, you might like seeing this substitution just to even help picture it so it makes sense to you. Later on, again, you might skip to there. And again, if we wanted to, we could continue on. If we were asked to solve for x or solve for y, we could say this is equal to 0. Remember, if this whole thing's equal to 0, it means either this is equal to 0, this is equal to 0, or both. So in our case, all we were looking at was factoring and factoring a special case. I wanted to demonstrate this. but. You could keep going if you were asked to. So for us, though, we're all done. Thank you.